But next up, we've got Shuling talking about creating a back end for front end with Next.js. So hopefully Shuling's able to, I know you're a co-host, hopefully oh, you yeah. can get some oh, yeah. slides up and share. I'm going to share my screen. Um, can you see the screen? That's fabulous. I'll mute me and you do you. <laughs> cool, great. <laughs> Thank you. I really, uh, really like Rokan's talk. Like, don't let just say something I don't know anything in that vein chat. Finally, I can catch up something. <laughs> so tonight my topic is about create your backend for, for front end with Next.js. Um, so who am I? I'm Shuying. I'm currently a consultant in Sox. So I'm going to share something I recently discovered when I play with Next.js. It's not in production or anything. It's something I'm just exploring and trying to figure it out. So cool. Um, um, forgive my um, handwriting, it looks off, <laughs> I know. Um, so a lot of times, uh, if you are a front-end developer, you probably have a user interface like what I share here. It's a, it's a web page called Instacat. And it's need to fetch data from various services. And here in this example, with this page is going to fetch the URL that, uh, from the picture service and the fetch the post from post service and the comments from comment service. Um, so it requires our um, UI client to send three requests to our different services. So um, what going to happen is, is, as a result, we the, the web client has to send multiple requests to retrieve all the information for the page. Um, at the same time, the downstream services might return a lot of data that, like in a large payload um, in these three separate calls. And that contains data isn't required for our UI. As a result of that, our page is gonna stuck there for a little bit time and until it's getting all the data ready and uh, presented on the screen. So your user experience might not be that nice and your application performance hurts a little bit by the three calls. Um, so someone comes from Solox um, thought up with an idea like called microservice, uh, a microservice pattern called backend for front end. Um, what it does is it allows our front end to have its own exclusive API and that API can boost the overall user experience and network performance. How it works, so we can see there is a backend for front end sit between our user interface and our services. So um, it works like a proxy. Now our um, UI client can just send a single request to the BFF to retrieve the information for this page. And the BFF will collect all the information um, required by the client. And although it's still talking to three um, different backends and get all the information, and it will do some data massaging, normalizing the data, and uh, return optimized, optimized payloads for our UI. Um, so it leads to a better performance for our user and also delight user experience. But nothing is perfect. Um, a lot of times, um, our, we're going to have separate repositories for our BFF and UI. It can result some headache. For example, maintenance effort. We have to set up two separate repositories and maintain them individually. And we can have code duplication, especially if you are using um, using Node.js to um, code your um, BFF as well. And you will find uh, uh, there is a lot of duplications like presenting the data, data class kind of stuff. And uh, you also have to build separate pipelines and deploy them separately um, once you want to get them to production. Um, so I was playing Next.js uh, at that time, and uh, I found out it's very recently they wrote out a new feature um, called API routes. So it can uh, kind of can um, build a BFF uh, in Next.js and then serve the BFF purpose. Um, I'm going to give a quick introduction about Next.js. So it's a React framework uh, made by a startup startup called Verso. It's open um, sourced project. Or what it does is it offers a lot of benefits, for example, serverless rendering and routing. And uh, um, so last year they wrote out that feature called API routes. What is an API route? Um, an API route is an API um, living inside Next.js and it's powered by a 
open source framework called Micro, also made by Verso people. So it allows us to build middleware for our UI. That was the purpose for, from Verso. But we also can build BFF use, utilizing our um, API routes. Another great thing is API routes um, supports both B, uh, GraphQL and the rest for API out of the box. Um, so we don't have to um, do a lot of setups to um, bundling kind of things to, for our BFF with Next.js. Um, now, by utilizing API routes, we can fetch different downstream services with just minimal amount of requests sending from our Next.js page. And uh, it can return an optimized payload through um, data massaging or normalizing and perform like a BFF returns um, a small load back to our UI for presenting. Um, another good thing I want to mention about this solution is um, monorepo. So now the, you can build your BFF along with your front end in the same repository. Um, it allows you to reuse your code as much as you want. Also, it gives us smooth local development, in, uh, local development experience, like Verso has very good um, local development setups for you. Um, cool. So I've talked a lot about the concept using this um, Diagram. So I'm going to give a quick snapshot on how things works. I'm going to stop sharing and share another screen. And uh, here we go. Um, can you see the sandbox? Cool. So I'm using a sandbox to present that. It's a based on a repository I, I put on my GitHub page. So um, originally, if you have a very new Next.js app, you will have a directory called pages. So on the pages, um, now you can put a directory called API. On the API, this is where the magic happens. So we can build our BFF under the API. Um, you can build into different files for like, um, like the, you want to talk different features um, based on the domains you put in your uh, front end. Uh, like here, what I did is the pages I built is very similar to, to the Instacat. It's going to have a cat page and have a post and have some comments. Um, so uh, what our BFF does is it's well um, fetching data from a JSON placeholder for posts and comments. And it's only grabbed the body. And also um, I here I have the formatted comments that filter out something I don't need it. And then I return the payloads, I uh, create a new JSON object and return these payloads um, to our front end. And back to our front end, what it does is it's uh, using get the server side proxy, which is, uh, um, which is like a server side rendering fetching mechanism inside Next.js. So here I can just do a single fetch um, from our local host. That, that was because our API routes living inside our Next.js. So we're using a local host here and uh, we can fetch all the data and then present it at what we want, just like this page. Um, I'm going to go back to the slide. Okay. So, um, well, I should using another <laughs> desktop. So, Cool. Um, now we're probably going to talk about um, deployment. Um, a good thing about Next.js is everything after build is well bundling into different functions. So we have it gives us a chance to deploy them as serverless uh, on serverless um, services. For example, you can deploy it on Google Cloud Functions, AWS Lambda. Also, Verso, they has their own um, platform. Probably someone know it's called Verso, so we can just quickly um, follow their guides and build it on Verso. Um, and since a lot of people are here using AWS in production, um, there is a trick. Um, there is a framework called Serverless. They have developed their own um, Next.js support packages. So I will show the link in the final slides, but everyone, uh, like if you are interested in try it, deploy it in production, um, please try with um, the serverless framework. It gives, uh, it will save you a lot of time to set up the uh, scripts and automation. Um, cool, so everything has their drawbacks. Like nothing will be perfect. There is some limitations when we're using Next.js to build our own BFF. 
So um, if you want to build a BFF in different languages, like you want to use um, a Spring, you want to use .NET, however, Next.js doesn't support because it's a React framework. It only supports JavaScript and TypeScript, probably Elm at this moment. And uh, if you want to build a BFF, uh, reuse, probably reuse the web BFF for your mobile app. Uh, it's anti-pattern, I would say. Um, so every user interface should have their different, like very exclusive experience. And BFF was built for that exclusive user experience um, with an API. So it would be great you have built your own BFF for your mobile app. Um, other thing would be if you want to customize your deployment, it take take it into your mind. It takes time to for customization. It's not that easy. Cool. Um, time to have a. Um, Takeaway. So um, backend for front end is a microservice pattern can uh, improve our user experience. Um, but build up, uh, like if you want to build a BFF, you can try to use in Next.js um, with API routes. It will simplify your development process. Um, other thing is API routes and Next.js can be built as Lambda and deployed to AWS, Google Cloud Function, as well as uh, Verso. Um, there are some resources um, if you are interested in, for example, service Next.js package, uh, service Next.js package, that's something can help us to automate the deployment, um, API route document, as well as the Git repository. Um, so feel free to try them out and uh, let me know how things work. By the way, my uh, Twitter handle is uh, underscore WLFP. Um, if you are interested, feel free to DM me. That was great, Shiling. I really... Your slides, like I wanted to, like I love Lachlan slides and still love them, Lachlan, but I love the handwriting and your ease of awesome. Like it was a whole different, it's like the anti-tech pattern. I love it. Um, would you, I've got a request, would you be able to put the slides, uh, sorry, the links in the chat here so people can click oh, on sure them I will. to think too much. Um, Alexi had a question that was around how next JS BFF compares to GraphQL endpoints. Um, okay, um, so GraphQL is a way, um, it's the same thing like RESTful API. And what BFF offer is a pattern that you uh, can deploy your either RESTful API or your GraphQL API, API for the front end. So um, similar pattern compares comprising payloads and fetching only fields that are necessary. Uh, yes, kind of, but uh, it's also, um, GraphQL actually um, resolve a lot of issue for that performance issue, um, but BFF just uh, BFF just in kind of um, make it to an another extra level, I would say. That's great.